this lesson would cover almost all aspects of restoring an item, um, all the way from removing old glue, mending, filling, painting, and glazing. The first step is remove the old repair. And we use a torch, mostly. There are other ways to remove glue. Visit our website to see the methodologies like boiling water or solvents. But here I'm just using a torch and um, make sure that it's placed on an uncombustible surface. It can get pretty hot. Different glues would break down a different temperature rate. This one is a little bit stubborn. I have to heat up the other side. Make sure the torch doesn't get too close to the items, wear eye protection and keep moving. Don't stay in one spot and hit all the surrounding area, not just where the connection is. Oops, yep, it did, it made it. Next step is to remove the old glue. We use a Dremel uh, abrasive. It's not too harsh. It doesn't break down the ceramic. It just removes the burned off glue. You don't want to alter the shape of the connection. You just want to remove the glue. But it's easier to heat it up again. It would come off, takes longer if you don't heat it up. You can see the old glue sort of whitish comes off easily. Speed up a little bit here. Again, make sure you wear eye protection and mask. <clears throat> the next step is cementing. Um, we use a resin or PVC pallets to hold the place. Gravity is your best friend when placing things together. Uh, you do dry run to make sure that it fits okay and it doesn't fall off. When you place it, <clears throat> squeeze it, make sure you don't wipe off the glue. It's gonna make a mess and it would be so much harder to remove. Uh, you just wanna clean the areas where you wanna sense if it aligns properly. I'm using alcohol, 70%, 91% is better, hard to get these days. And notice that I'm wiping off <clears throat> only in places where I want to touch. And uh, just to secure it, sometimes things slide off because the epoxy become a lubricant and it may shift a minute later. So I use scotch tape just to make sure that it doesn't shift when I'm not paying attention as I let it cure. Verifying by contact, touching is the best tool you have to verify. So some period of time, it's better to remove the old glue four, five, six, seven hours later. If you wait too long, the glue, the cured glue becomes really hard. It's harder to remove. So I tried to do it the same day towards the end of the day. The next step is uh, filling and glaze and sanding. There are several layers that we have to fill and sand. Uh, we start with um, rough fill just to make sure that all the gaps are filled in. Um, the uh, filler epoxy we use made by PC epoxy, it's PC11. 
We like to keep it warm. We use a wax warmer, typically at 140 degrees. The epoxy is more malleable, easier to mix that way. Squeeze the filler into all the gaps, not only on the surface, make sure that it's getting pushed in. I place it on black so the uh, PC epoxy doesn't touch the tabletop on the other side. And uh, after cure time, usually overnight in a 140 degree oven or several days later in room temperature, it's ready to be sanded. Um, we use um, Dremel, easy fit, 120 grit. That process is applicable only to items that are glazed and they have very resistive surface. That is not the way we use it on porous material, a soft material. Please wear a mask and eye protection. The room is ventilated. And also a good idea to have. Then after uh, the Dremel, uh, there would be some residual of filler and we use uh, 220 grit hand sanding process to remove the rest of it. Sensing by fingers, it's really a good way to know if uh, you have any uh, steps that you missed or any deviation in surface continuity or where you missed sending. Clean it well. And then the next step would be to fill it up again with PC11 um, <clears throat> with a much finer process. You basically feel all the area that were missed with a rough sending. To find our defects or area that we've missed, we use a UV light. It does require to wear protective glasses with a proper filter. And it helps me to find out gaps. Uh, there would be an example here where I'm showing through the glasses, you can see a little pinhole that it was impossible to see with the naked eye. And I go back and fill it in. And we cure it at 140 degrees for overnight and sending it. If you don't have an oven, you have to wait a few days before it's going to be sendable. Otherwise, it would be gummy and you have to wait longer. Um, room temperature should be 70 degrees or hotter. If it's colder, it would take forever for it to cure.
checking everything and then I'm going with a um, finer sandpaper 400 grit to remove any scratches and make the surface continuity better and then polishing we use a uh, 3600 or 2400 micro mesh it's a very fine sandpaper that again to remove any residual then uh, we're ready for painting and glazing um, in this case we want to protect certain colors before we use the airbrush to apply specific color we use the thin tape first it allow more flexibility we can adjust it precisely without having any kinks and then i apply the wider one um, just to cover more area first color is green i'm mixing it to match uh, I'm not showing every little step with the mixing. It requires some experience and also knowing that certain colors, when they dry, they get darker, some get lighter, some get even more dark after you glaze it. So you have to have all this knowledge to know how to tune it down a little bit, compensating for what's going to become later. In this case, I have to make it lighter, knowing that it would get darker as it dries. When you airbrush, uh, the mix is a little bit thinner. You had more water, so it would move through the nozzle properly. I do a test to see if it's the last the right width, the right pressure. And I have to go more than one layer. This is layer number one. You're still going to see the repair line under. We have to let it dry. You can see the green is lighter. That's going to change once it dries. I like to dry it under the lamp. I do. I go layer number two. Then I got more opaque coverage. Then layer number three is the feathering out. It's basically integrating the color to the rest of the green. And when it dries, you can see it matches now. It's not as light as it used to be when it was wet. Removing the tape. Continuing with the next color, taping to protect it from the airbrush. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, going two layers to have better coverage of the repair line, removing the tape. Then I have to apply glazing to protect the next areas where I have to put the tape on so it won't peel the freshly painted that we did previously before you glaze you have to make sure the acrylic is totally dry we add some matting agent to the glaze to make sure that it's not too shiny so the acrylic won't pebble as i'm painting it And now it is safe to apply the tape over the painted, previously painted area because I have glaze protecting it. Again, I'm repeating the process of painting. Two layers, feathering. And the same thing, glazing after the acrylic dries properly. And moving on with the next color. Mm -hmm. 
There's some details that I want to protect, so I won't cover them with a with a acrylic that I'm gonna airbrush. Um, I'm covering it with latex, which can be peeled off easily later. It needs to dry for a few hours before you can paint over that. Mixing the color, testing it, because it's green, it's going to get darker, so I have to make it lighter again to, co to compensate for um, it becoming darker later. I'm going to airbrush the green again three times, first layer, second layer, and uh, feathering. Here there would be a fourth layer as well, where I have to generate a bunch of dots, but you can't see clearly in the picture, this darker blue. Let it dry, remove the tape, and then remove the latex. Sometimes when you remove the latex, you got some edges of the paint lifting up. So I uh, brush them off with a brush. This is only when it dries well, after it dries well. And now we're ready for the um, hand painting details. There are quite a few of them. While you're watching this, let me explain that what, uh, after you, before you glaze, you have to have the acrylic dries completely. The glaze would interact with the acrylic if it's not cured properly, and it's going to change the colors dramatically. Yellow going to become so much more yellow. So we we put it in our oven, 140 degrees for 24 hours, and if you don't have an oven, you let the acrylic dry for a long time, days. If it's humid, sometimes for weeks. So here I'm glazing it after it's been in the oven for uh, 24 hours. And then I can go back and paint the details. Painting is the most time consuming process, especially when you have all these different colors, different shapes and needing to apply protective layers, etc. Um, this doesn't cover everything with painting uh, to know more about painting visit our website lakesidepottery.com and go to click on the uh, repair lessons and we have a chapter about painting again it's not going to cover everything you need to know it requires a lot of practice and uh, especially knowing how the colors get affected when they dry they get darker some of them get lighter uh, the glaze interacts with them as well and this is just to give you an idea. In this case, for example, I, per I covered with purple and I'm putting the pink. And the question is, why did I put purple under? Is because it's a little bit translucent and the purple need to show under the pink the same way as the original does. Here I'm uh, taping a triangle using a sea sponge to create the effect. I'm going to do on the other side as well. There are uh, faint blue triangles there as well. The same as the pink, same shape, but much lighter. It's hard to see in here. Um, mixing the blue to match. Looks like I'm having some difficulty there to get it right first time. I 
Need some yellow. And here it is. You never seen the studio. This is a subset. We have three studios. This is a section of one of them where um, this way you get a perspective of what it looks like. I always focus on the plate. So i uh, just give you a 20 second tour. Um, this is our painting state, one of the painting stations. Um, this is the inventory. Some of the repairs waiting in the queue. This is the gluing and the filling bench. This is the 140 degree oven I was talking about before. It's basically an old wine rack that was modified. Um, now uh, we are um, doing the back. The same thing, just less colors. Mixing the white, which is sort of off-white. The problem here, it's not consistent. It's not the same color throughout the line, so I had to adjust it based on what part of the line it is on. Here's layer one, layer two. After waiting for the right period of time, applying the glaze to protect it, um, before I apply the black. The reason why we're protecting it is just to make sure that if you make a mistake, you inv you protect your investment. You can wipe it off because it's over a glaze. Uh, this is one of the main reasons for that. And here it is. That's the final glazing. Uh, it's a little bit thicker coat. And here it is. It's ready to be shipped front, back. Thank you for listening. Again, we have a lot of lessons on our website. Visit us, ask questions. Thank you.